the derivatives can tell us a whole bunch about the shape of a graph of a function. And that's what we're going to look at today. We're going to answer the question, what do derivatives tell us? about the shape of a graph. First thing we're going to look at is what is called the first derivative test. And to kind of set up what the first derivative test does, I'm going to draw a little picture here. Actually, three pictures, three little graphs. And we're going to compare what the derivative is doing on each. So here is some function f kind of curving upwards. We'll have some function f curving downwards. And then we'll have a function f that comes up to a point. And we're going to be interested, particularly at a point C, kind of in the middle of both of the, or all three of these, and what the derivative is doing at each one of those. Now, we know the derivative is the slope of the tangent line at that point. And so if I draw my point and the tangent line, for the one that's go increasing, for the one that's curving upwards, you see the slope is also going upwards. In other words, if the function f of x is increasing, the derivative f prime of x is positive. And similarly, at the point c, on the curve that's decreasing or going down, you'll see that the slope of the tangent line is going downhill. It is negative. So we'll say that when f of x is decreasing, the derivative f prime of x is negative. Now at the peak here on the third graph, you'll notice that it's neither increasing or decreasing. And in fact, the tangent line is completely flat at that point. So if f of x is neither increasing nor decreasing, then f prime of x is 0, which is neither positive nor negative. Now, we recognize that point As a point, when the derivative is 0, we call that a critical point. We already know that critical points are where the derivative is 0. It's either a maximum or a minimum value. So let's summarize that conclusion in the actual test, the first derivative test. What we're going to do with the first derivative test to learn about the function is first we're going to find all critical points. And as a reminder, that's when f prime of x is equal to 0 or it's undefined. Once we find those points, we can use those points to divide f prime of x into subregions. And then we can test each subregion. And we'll find out where the derivative is 0. That's going to be where the graph levels out. And then we'll know in between those points, is the graph increasing or decreasing based on what the derivative is doing. So let's see if we can use that test with an example here. 
The example we're going to play with is f of x equals x cubed minus 12x. We're going to decide where is the derivative 0, where is it increasing, where is it decreasing. Well, first we have to know the derivative. f prime of x is equal to 3x squared minus 12. And to find those critical points, we set it equal to 0. So if I add 12 to both sides, actually, let's just factor it. Uh, let's do 3 times x squared minus 4 equals 0. 3 times x plus 2 times x minus 2 equals 0. So our critical points are x equals negative 2 and positive 2. Those are our critical points. Then what we're going to do is we're going to divide kind of a number line into those subregions. We've got negative 2 and positive 2. And we know at those points, the derivative is 0. The graph is flat at those points. So what's f prime in those regions? The easiest way to test that is we're going to go to our calculator. On the calculator, we're going to hit the y equals button and type in our derivative function. So we know if the derivative is positive or negative. The derivative function was 3x squared minus 12. And we'll go to our table, second table. Let's delete out the old values. Now first, we need to test a point in each of these three regions, left of negative 2, between negative 2 and positive 2, and right of 2. So left of negative 2, we can pick any number. Let's pick negative 5. And we see it's a positive 63. So left of negative 2, the derivative is positive. What that means is that f, the function, left of negative 2, is actually increasing because the derivative is positive. Between negative 2 and 2, let's put the number 0 in. It's negative 12. The derivative is negative between, which means the function itself is decreasing between negative 2 and 2. Greater than 2, maybe pick the number positive 5. It's positive. All we care about is the sign. And so that tells us that it is increasing over that range. Now we know where the graph is increasing, decreasing, and then increasing again. It's giving us a general idea of the shape of the graph. But there's more to the graph than just whether it's increasing or decreasing. It helps to know what direction or how it is curving. Is it curving? When it goes up on this left part, is it curving up? Or is it curving? Up. Those are two very different curves in red there. We need to know what type of curve it's doing as it's increasing. And that leads us to our next topic, the next thing the derivatives tell us about the graph. And this is what we call concavity. Now, concavity might be a new concept to us. So let's set it up first with a little bit of vocabulary. The first word we need to know is what is concave up? Concave up means it, the graph itself appears to be rotating counterclockwise. And if you think about uh, a general parabola, Starting from the left, you see it rotates counterclockwise as you draw the parabola. You also could have something approaching an asymptote, kind of giving a counterclockwise rotation, or even if it was increasing, a counterclockwise rotation. Going from left to right, you're moving around the circle counterclockwise. And that kind of makes sense counterclockwise if we think about our unit circle, which we're very familiar with. We count unit circles counterclockwise. So that's a positive concave up motion going counterclockwise.
Another way that I like to think about concave up is if I think about the parabola, it looks like the u of concave up. And that reminds me that u up is concave up. As you might expect, the next word is concave down. And here we are rotating clockwise. Or if you think about the unit circle, in the negative direction. If you start from the left, a negative parabola is concave down. It's going clockwise around. And you could also get things approaching asymptotes in much the similar way. These all are concave down. And as you might expect, with calculus, we're interested in when we switch between a concave up motion and a concave down motion. Just like when we switch from increasing and decreasing, we have critical points. With concavity, when we switch between concave up and concave down, what we end up with are called inflection points. And that is where the concavity changes. For example, the graph could be first concave up, and then it's going to switch to concave down. Right in the center there, you see the rotation direction changes. Starts out going clockwise or counterclockwise, then it changes to clockwise. The classic x cubed also, let's see, this one starts out going counterclockwise and then turning it to clockwise. You start concave up, and then you change to concave down in the middle. Those are inflection points where the concavity changes. And just like a critical point is when the derivative is equal to 0, concavity can also be found. The way we find those inflection points is we look at the second derivative, f prime prime of x, and see when it's 0 or undefined. Now, concavity tells us a whole lot when it's combined with the first derivative test and whether the graph is increasing or decreasing. Let's look at concavity and increasing, decreasing relationships. And to set this up, we're going to do a little tic-tac-toe board here. And we're going to look at what happens if the graph is increasing and it's concave up. If it's increasing and concave up, we have to rotate counterclockwise as we increase. Contrast that with increasing and concave down. Now, as we are increasing, we have to rotate clockwise, which takes us off in the other direction. Similarly, we can compare what happens when we are decreasing. If we are decreasing and we're concave up, as we go down, we have to rotate counterclockwise versus if it's decreasing and concave down, as we rotate, it has to rotate downward clockwise. So if we know both of these facts about the graph, we will very quickly know the shape of the graph and what is going on at various points. And we test for concavity. Very similar to how we test the first derivative test, except instead of finding critical points, first we find inflection points. And once we find those inflection points, we can divide 
the second derivative, f prime prime of x, into subregions. And again, we will test each subregion. So let's take a look at just doing that test for concavity, and then we'll bring it together here in just a minute. So number four, going back to that same example we had before, where f of x is equal to x cubed minus 12x. We already said the first derivative was 3x squared minus 12. The second derivative, then, we can quickly calculate to be 6x. And so we're going to divide the number line into subregions based on those inflection points, based on when that second derivative equals 0. We'll divide both sides by 6, and x equals 0 is my inflection point. And so right at 0 is where we are going to split up the f prime prime to see what's happening. Where is the second derivative positive and negative? Going to y equals now, I'm going to clear out the second derivative, or the first derivative. We'll put in the second derivative equation, which is just 6x, and then go to the table, delete out what I don't need. And I might have been able to do this in my head. In fact, I should be able to do this one in my head. But just to show you for the more complex equations, I'm going to test something to the left of 0, maybe negative 5. And I see the der second derivative is, zero, is negative. Then we'll test something to the right of 0, maybe positive 5. And we'll see the second derivative is positive. So we've divided into subregions. We know where the second derivative is positive and negative. Now we know if our function, the original function, x cubed minus 12, is concave up or concave down. We see on the left it's negative, so it is concave down to begin with, up until 0, where it becomes concave up. So we know on the left it's going to have some type of clockwise motion. On the right, it's going to have some type of counterclockwise motion. I'm kind of running out of space. Whoops. OK. Now that we know how these tests all work, let's bring it all together. with our function f of x equals x cubed minus 12x. The first derivative, which I'm going to always represent in blue here, is 3x squared minus 12. And we know if we make that equal to 0, we found out earlier that gave us critical points at negative 2 and positive 2. The second derivative I'm going to represent now in green is going to be 6x, which when we made that equal to 0, that gave us inflection point at 0. I strongly encourage you color code your critical points and your inflection points so you don't get them confused as you're breaking up into subregions here. We know we've got critical points at negative 2 and 2. So these guys are going to split up my f prime, my first derivative. I've got an inflection point at 0, so that's how I'm going to split up the second derivative of f prime prime. And ultimately, we're interested in what's happening to our function f in each of these regions. There's not actually a lot of space to the left, so I'm going to rewrite that, give myself, give myself a little more space f, f prime, and f prime prime. 
Okay. First in green, to the left of 0, we found out the second derivative was negative. So we know it's going to be concave down. To the right of 0, we found out that the second derivative was positive. And so we know there that the graph is concave up. In blue, in the middle, the first derivative to the left of 2, now we're looking at the blue lines, ignoring the green lines, to the left of 2, we found out the second derivative was positive, which meant the graph is increasing. Between negative 2 and positive 2, we found out the second derivative was negative, which means the graph is decreasing between those points. To the right of 2, we found out that the, second, that the first derivative was positive, and so we know the graph is increasing. So now at the very top, in red, we should have an idea what the graph of f is doing. Left of negative 2, we see that we're concave down and increasing. So concave down and increasing, the graph is going to curve clockwise while increasing. Then between negative 2 and 0, we see it's still concave down, but it's decreasing. Decreasing in concave down is going to go clockwise and downward. But after 0, we're still decreasing, but the graph is concave up, which means it's going to rotate its curve to be concave up as it's decreasing. To the right of 2, it is concave up and increasing. So we're rotating counterclockwise as we increase. Now we have a lot better idea of what's happening with this graph. Let's see if we can actually make our graph. And I'm not going to put anything on the y-axis yet because we don't quite have those. What we do know about the graph is, and I'm going to put a little dotted line. It's not a, it's just to kind of mark right there on negative 2 is going to be some type of critical point. So I should expect it to level off when it hits the blue line. At 2 is another critical point. So I should expect it to level off when it hits that blue line. And then at 0 is going to be my inflection point where the rotation changes. Okay, we know our graph increases and rotates clockwise up to a critical point. Then it's going to decrease, continuing to rotate clockwise until it hits an inflection point where the rotation should change, but it should still be decreasing until it hits a critical point. And then we keep rotating counterclockwise as we increase. And I want to notice all the elements of our graph. It starts out increasing, then it's decreasing, then it's increasing. It starts out rotating clockwise until the inflection point when it rotates counterclockwise giving us the concave down on the left and concave up on the right. And this is how the derivatives can help us get a very good idea of the shape of the function. Try a few of these on your own. Come back to class ready to discuss them, and we will see you then.